Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. The fellas heading down to the SCC to take a look at an interesting matchup as Arkansas heads on the road to Alabama. And Dill, this is an Alabama team that I think is starting to figure it out. And if you're an Alabama fan, not only are you happy with the win on the road against Texas A&M, but that was not the best form of this Alabama team. I think there's a lot of room for improvement, especially in the penalty category. This Alabama team, uh, it's not going anywhere. As much as people in the national media want to write them off, this is still a very good team with an elite defense that will be tested by Arkansas that does a few things that I want to talk about. Now, before we get into it, just want to say thank you to you guys. Uh, the support you guys have shown the boys for all these game breakdowns truly has been amazing. We love doing these. We love talking ball with you guys in the comments section. Can't thank you guys enough. So if you do enjoy the content, consider Subscribing to the channel, Dill. I'm gonna give you the T box here. Alabama, Arkansas. How are we feeling? Yeah, I think what obviously is is the story coming out of that A and M game is Jalen Miller kind of putting it together. Come on, his back a little bit, and, and they were they were flowing through that passing attack. The rushing attack obviously was very weak, and and again, very very tough front seven for A and M. So you kind of knew that Jalen Miller would probably have to do something because you're just not gonna run the ball. Down yeah. a team throw late Texas A&M, but man, to have him play that type of game and then Jermaine Burton on top of it emerge as like kind of the guy, I I, I really think that's what you got to be take away from that. Jermaine that Burton area. is that dude in this offense, which I think is massive. Like when you look at the elite Alabama teams, like they've had that elite wide receiver. Am I saying Jermaine Burton is like Devontae Smith? No. That being said, I do think Jermaine Burton is a true wide receiver one in the SEC, and him kind of putting it together and. Gaining that confidence, if you will, like that's going to be absolutely massive for this Alabama offense. And I think even more importantly, you're starting to see Tommy Reese and Jalen Milrow get on the same page. I think like the first couple of games is like, all right, what does Jalen Milrow do good? What does he not do good? Like, how can we cater this offense to make him as successful as possible? They didn't have the right recipe the first couple of weeks. I think now you're starting to get that recipe a little bit more ironed out. And as a result, this Alabama offense starting to do some damage. Yeah, and I like that they're letting him rip the ball down the field pretty yeah, consistently because, yeah. frankly, that's he throws a really good deep ball. He's got a big arm. And that, I mean, that was working. I think the fact that Jermaine Burton's starting to emerge and, and get some attention, I'd like to see, think that will free up guys like your boy Isaiah Bond. Nice guy, Isaiah Bond, of course, and Amari Kneeblack. And, and the guys who have, again, have been making some plays, but maybe not as consistent as you'd like. I do kind of wonder if, like, again, the emergence of Burton helps – kind of just helps open this whole offense up because you kind of do now have a guy it feels like you got to pay some attention to because he – Jermaine Burton was doing everything at every level. He was catching balls intermediate. He was got a guy for the safety blanket. And it's given Jalen Miller a guy. It's given him, like, hey, when we need to make a play, like, that's my guy over there. And that's – Again, you look at back, especially at the Alabama teams, like the quarterback wide receiver batteries that have been so big, like you're starting to see that develop between Jalen Milrow and Jermaine Burton. Now, we got to talk about the ugly too, and that is like the inability to run the football and in pass protection, it's just not good enough. Now, this offensive line to me, you have a ton of talent on that group. They're still just kind of kind of going through some growing pains. I mean, you got a true true freshman starting at left tackle. You got a second year guy right next to him in Tyler Booker. Two guys that are extremely talented, just going through some growing pains. If this Alabama team, especially up front, can continue to get better, that is going to be the best form of this Alabama team. But 0.9 yards per carry against Texas A&M, who is a good front seven, but it doesn't matter who the who. It doesn't matter the front seven they're going up against. Like if Alabama wants to win a national championship, do what Alabama expects their teams to do. They need to run the football a hell of a lot better than they've been doing the last couple of weeks. Yeah, and that was like the disappointing thing because you're coming off an Ole Miss game, especially in that second half where it felt like you were breaking through a little bit and they were moving guys off the ball in running the way you think Alabama wants to run and then, again, to go yeah, do what they did. And, and that point nine obviously is adjusting for sacks, but even Jason McClellan on 12 carries only averaging 3.8 and Roydell yeah. Williams only getting one and a half on six. So that, I mean, that's your two bell cows not getting above – Really, probably right around wow, three. Yards I mean, and you can watch that. You don't need to read the box score to see. Like, they're just not like kind of winning at the point of attack. And they're also struggling in pass pro. 15% sack rate. That is one of the worst in the country. Now, looking at Arkansas, 
Like they do get after the passer really well. So it's going to be a nice test for Alabama. Arkansas sacking the quarterback 10% of the time. They got some guys, Jeff Coat, Morgan, who can get after it. And if you're Arkansas and you're thinking, how can we get this upset done on the road? It is creating those negative plays and getting after Jalen Milrow. Now I will say this. The one thing that Arkansas has not done well and Alabama does really well is hitting the explosive play. And Arkansas is allowing 8.9 yards per pass. That's 118th in the country. And if we know anything about Alabama, how they want to move the football is working the ball to that deeper third, using Jalen Milrow in that big arm. He throws. And there's some question marks about some of his throws. When he pushed the ball downfield, that is a thing of beauty. I'm, I mean, when you're looking at this matchup, it's can Arkansas get after Jalen Milrow, and then can Jalen Milrow beat Arkansas in that deeper third? That's probably the story of the game here. And I'm also looking for Arkansas to try to create some confusion both at the offensive line for Alabama and then in the secondary because that is a thing. Yes. At least to me, I felt like Arkansas has done a good job with it yes. in the past couple of years and even, even on to this year. This year, so this defense for Arkansas like has been pretty good. I don't think the, the reason Arkansas is struggling, we'll get to the reason I think they're struggling, but it has not been on the defensive side of the ball. If Arkansas, but if Arkansas is going to win the, this game, I think they need to make some plays on defense. It can't 100%. just be like slow this offense down because yes. you know, we get to the other side. I think Alabama's defense obviously very tough, but I'd like to see them try to like – do some things to confuse Milrow and maybe mix in zones and, and do what they do and do, frankly, what they did to that LSU team for the first half of that football yes. game. Where they they kind of had Jaden Daniels a little confused. He just threw, threw the pick, obviously, in the glove there. And, and, and doing things up front to, like, create some havoc because that's I, – I do think you can still maybe get to Alabama a little bit. because Alabama guys, has not been good picking up the blitzes either. Like, their slides and, – and, and I mean, I don't think – I think Jalen Milrow's inexperienced in calling out protection, but you're seeing the youth of that offensive line when they're facing blitzes. Like, guys are coming free. That's a massive problem that Arkansas, no doubt in my mind, will try to exploit. Dill, Alabama's defense, though. I, I If you ask me what is the recipe for Alabama – winning a national title, it's going to be this offense kind of figures it out and is a solid offense, but they're winning a national title on the back of this defense that, yes, it's banged up, but, man, it is ferocious on all three levels. You take a look at how they're getting after the passer. I mean, a 10.5% sack rate, that's really good, but what's even more impressive is, like, the amount of guys that are just winning their one-on-ones. Dallas Turner, 20 hurries on the year. Chris Braswell, 15 hurries on the year. Tim Keenan from the inside, already racking up 12 quarterback hurries. This is a group that is going to get after you with their front seven, and they got some really good guys in the back end that can kind of clamp down on the outside. Yeah, I mean, this is really feels like that. I mean, again, that Alabama defensive line we probably haven't seen in a couple of years, mainly because I think this interior is just like, like quite a bit better than anything maybe we've seen since like 29 or 2018, 17, those really, really good defensive years that Alabama put out and that that has felt like a difference because they've had some guys on the edge like Will Anderson and, and, and so forth but I mean yeah Tim Keenan and Tim Smith and some they're of more guys. complete this year like the depth here I think is just it's it's next level in this front seven and they're not the space eaters I feel like sometimes no. Alabama just has yeah. like agreed not really impactful defensive linemen like these guys all rush the pass really well they make plays behind the bag they get TFLs they just are racking up stats and they're they're a unit that's really starting to take some games over. I thought they played really good against AM and and they've been play- obviously shut the old Miss team. Now down. you look at how, how they match up against Arkansas and get, getting into why I think Arkansas has struggled so much, it's, it's the offensive line. You look at what Arkansas wants to do. When Arkansas is an elite SEC team or when they're kind of being extremely competitive, it's that offensive line is the best unit on the field. They're establishing the run and they're good in pass for They're not doing any of that. Right, I mean, three yards per carry. That's 115th in the country. They have a 13.5 percent sack rate. That's 128th. I mean, I don't love calling like individual guys out, but Andrew Trambley, Patrick Kudis combined have given up over 30 hurries on the year. You look at Alabama and what they can do in the front seven, especially winning on the edge. I mean, KJ Jefferson is going to have to be a Houdini. I feel like in this game for for Arkansas to have a shot. I mean, that is the one thing, though. He has been doing his He's thing. He's been awesome. KJ. AJ Jefferson's playing his way into, like, I think a – I mean, he might have a good shot of getting drafted day two if he keeps up playing this way he's playing because he's 
again, the ball's getting out much quicker. It's getting, it's getting out accurately. Like things he didn't do last year. I thought he took too many sacks and it, it, it wasn't as decisive. And the he's, sacks he's taken this year is not like the ball's no, not, 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 he doesn't have a shot back there. Uh, I just you look at this Arkansas team, what their identity is like. The, I don't know what their identity is on the offense side. Well, of the ben ball. also com- combines what they do with the secondary, so that's like, <laughs> I mean, you saw them put up a lot of points against LSU, and LSU was really getting after them up front. But then you look at what this LSU secondary has turned into. It, it might joke. be one of the worst in the conference, possibly one of the worst in the Power Five. They yeah. really have struggled mightily this year. Alabama is really not. Not that type of group. I mean, no. Gary and Arnold has obviously emerged. You knew Kool Aid was really good, and then Caleb Downs coming in and making some huge plays. I think if he doesn't make that pick, they I'm not sure they win that game without it. And the Terry and Arnold, I believe he's the one who took over for Malachi Moore when he went down, and he's been. You we knew Kool Aid McKinstry would be that dude. Like he's like the best cornerback in the country. Terry Arnold's been playing awesome on the other side. True freshman Caleb Downs has been playing really good football. Again, when you talk about Alabama's defense, like all three levels, it's really, really complete. And when you look at what Arkansas struggles with, it it does on paper to me seem like it's going to be a long day. Still getting to the pick here, Arkansas heading on the road to Alabama. 19-point underdogs. What side are we on here? And I don't really think Arkansas has much of a shot, but I think I think KJ Jefferson might keep them in this football game. And I'm not convinced Alabama is going to score a zillion points at any point this season. So I'll, I'll probably go with the Razorbacks. I think like this, again, like Alabama's probably going to win by two touchdowns. I just don't know if it'll be three. I think, I just think the way KJ Jefferson's playing and, and I think they can maybe get a turnover too on the defensive side of the ball. I, I think they can keep this respectable. Not like, I don't think they're going to threaten to win it. Cause again, I don't think they're good enough up front on the offensive line to really be consistent. But I, I think KJ Jefferson can make enough plays. Yeah, that's the if, if Arkansas keeps this one close as an in this one, it, it is on the back of KJ. I don't I'm I'm going to Alabama. This defense has been way too good as of late. I think the offense, I think you're gonna see a week by week improvement on the offensive side of the ball as Jalen Milrow gets a little bit more confidence as Tommy Reese learns what Jalen Milrow does well. I think you're gonna see the strongest version of this Alabama team end of October, early November. Give me Alabama covering the points. I think they could win in a big way. I don't think Nick Saban was extremely happy with how they won that game on the road against Texas A&M. I'm rocking with Bama. Again, appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas. If you do enjoy the content, again, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to you all later.